Okay, so hi there everyone. Um, we're going to add some videos in Introduction to Statistics. Um, in this um, batch of videos, we're going to talk about organization and presentation of data. Okay, so this will be part of our playlist and Introduction to Statistics, and um, let's get into it. So when we organize and present uh, data um, in statistics, so remember that statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with the collection, organization, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data. So there are two types of data generally. So we have ungrouped data and grouped data. So ungrouped data refers to those data that are either not organized or are arranged in ascending or descending order. So again, it's either not organized or are arranged in ascending or descending order. So that's how you classify ungrouped data. While group data are data that are organized into different classes or categories. So we're going to get into them one by one. So first, let's talk about the forms of presenting them. So um, the first one in presenting data is via textual. So this form of presentation combines text and numerical facts in a statistical report. Usually, the examples that I will be presenting here is more on numerical facts, but it can be, take note, it can be text in a form of a text. So let's give some examples. Say we have um, test scores of students taking a math class, in particular, taking a calculus class, and these are the their scores of those 50 students here. So this is in a form of a text or a textual way of, of writing it because it's either on text or numerical facts. So these are numerical facts, which are test scores of 50 students in calculus. So we have the scores like 25, 30, 18, 17, 50, and so on, and Patil, the last um, student here. Now, we said that in a textual, in, 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 in an ungrouped data, so actually this is one, one way of writing it in an ungrouped way. So it may be not organized or it may be arranged um, in either ascending or descending order. So um, arranging the scores from lowest to highest uh, will facilitate the enumeration of important characteristics of the data. So the test scores of the 50 students, uh, which was shown aside before, now we're going to arrange it as in ascending order that is from lowest going to highest will be shown below. So we have this and the scores are taken from um, Top to bottom, okay, top to bottom. So we have 3, 9, 10, 10, 12. We have 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on. As you can see, it's now arranged in ascending order, that is lowest to highest, okay? So from this um, example, we can capture some big important characteristics. So for instance, we can see that the highest score obtained is 50. Actually, they're both um, two students got the, the perfect score, and the lowest score they got is three. Okay, we can say that ten students got a score of forty and above because we can see it from here that there are two groups of fives having forty and above, and only got four. Um, only four students got ten and below. So these are these students, the four students who got ten and below. So generally, we can also say some important statistics here that um, the students' performance. Uh, the first students in this class performed well in the test with 33 students or 66 percent generally got a score of 25 and above so where's 25 25 is over here so we can see that there are six uh, 33 of them so uh 10 20 30 30 33 so those are important parts of the when that's those are the, the you know the, the good things when we will be arranging them in order that is in from from greatest or rather from least to highest or greatest to, greatest to least when we will arrange it in descending order actually we can still see the same characteristics um popping up all right now let's get that's it that's the first way of um presenting the data second way is uh, via making use of this stem and leaf plot okay so what does this stem and leaf plot do it sorts data according to a certain pattern and uh, it involves separating a number into two parts so um, imagine you're you have a two digit number a 10 a 10 uh, a 10 up 10 you know 10 up until 99 the stem consists of the first digit and the leaf consists of the second digit so it's highlighted here when we have a three digit number 100 up until 999 the stem consists of the first two digits and the leaf consists of the last 
digit. And if you only have um, a one digit number, so this time will, is going to be zero, uh, which means that that number will all about the leaf. So I'm going back in our example in the test course of 50 students in calculus. Um, these are the scores. Let's put them in a stem and leaf plot. So they're already arranged in ascending order. So how do we do that? Um, we're going to do it like this. So first, we have two answers here, which are one uh, one digit number. So their stems will be zero, their leaves will be three and nine. Um, here, we have 10. Um, the stem will be one, the leaf will be zero. We have 10, the same thing happens. We have 12, the stem will be one, the leaf will be 12. And continue that process, we will have this table over here, which is what we call the stem and leaf plot. Now, um, reading this, meaning we have numbers like 0, 3, 0, 9, that's your 3 and that's your 9. We have 1, 0, that's your 10. We have another 1, 0, that's your 10. So imagine um, every time we cross out here, we write it here. Okay, so we have 1, 2, we have only 1, 12, that's the 2 here. We have 1, 3, 13, we have two of them, so we can see two 3s here. We have also 14, that's only one of them, so here, 14. We have 115, we have 116, we have 117. So 15, 16, 17. We have 218, so that's why we put two eights here. We have 119, that's why we have one nine here. Now, imagine the 20 now. Um, we will change our stem because our first digit number is now is now different from one. So we start with two here, and then we put zero as the leaf. Okay, we have um, 20, 21, 25, 26, 26. So we have two zero to one, to five, to six, to six. Okay, so we're, we're still on the same row of the stem of two. We have 27, 28, 28, 28, 29. So two, seven, eight, 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 nine. And then we enter the domain of 30. So we change our stem into three. We write three and then we put zero there. And we have zero, one, one, two. 0, 1, 1, 2, which is correct. So you have 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. So we are on, we're still on this same row. 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. We continue the process. We have 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. So notice 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we move to the next two um, columns of data. So we have 40. So we start with the our stem now with the 4. So we have three forties, 41, 42. So we have four zero, four zero, four zero, four one, four two, and we have 43, 46, 48. So three, six, eight, and then we have two fifties. Those are the highest scores. So we have five, zero, five, zero. So um, that's how you write your stem and leaf plot. Um, hopefully you got how this was um, created, how this was made. The stems are the tenths digit. The, all the leaves are from the ones digits. And strictly, leaves should only have one digit, uh, the ones digits alone. Okay, now from this stem and leaf plot, we can have a lot of statistics and a lot of information from the data we have we have taken. So, for instance, um, by just by looking at the stem and leaf plot, we can easily rank the data or put them in order. So, thus, the ten lowest scores are three, nine. 10, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, and yeah, and that ends with 16. While the highest scores are from above, 50, 50, 48, 46. Um, we have 43, 42, 41, and we have 340s. So um, that's one perks. One of the perks when you are um, having this stem and leaf plot because it's easy to see and have a big picture of your uh, how your data is all about. Okay, how your data is uh, the information rather of the, of your set of data. Um, moving on, we also have one form. Okay, one form of of uh, representing uh, data that is making use of a table. Okay, that is making use of a table. So let's go here. So that is in number three, that's tabular. Now this form of presentation is better than the textual form. Um, some some will also uh, tell that it's better than the stem and leaf plot um, because it provides numerical facts in a more concise and systematic manner. Statistics table or statistical tables are constructed to facilitate the analysis of relationships. Each class or subclass is assigned to a particular row or column 
and figures for various classifications um, that are noted in appropriate cells. So um, we have some important advantages of making use of this tablet of, of this um, tables, okay, making use of tabular form when presenting our data. So one of which is that it is brief, it can be presented in a brief manner because it's it's really um, um, concise to look at. It reduces the matter to the minimum and the important parts are highlighted. It provides a reader a good grasp of the meaning of the quantitative relationship indicated in the report. Okay. So it gives you a, 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 um, the important meanings. It provides the the most significant ones rather than get, let, letting you all see all the data that, uh, you know, some don't have that much importance. It tells the whole story without the necessity of mixing textual matter with figures. I think it's, it's all clear because it's presented in a brief and concise form. Um, the systematic arrangement of columns and rows makes them easy to read and readily understood. And um, the column and rows um, make the comparison easier. Okay, and one particular table that we're going to present in this batch of videos is going to be a frequency, what we call a frequency distribution. I already have the, those videos in frequency distribution, but we're making use of Excel. Here, we're going to make use of uh, manual manual forms on how to create this frequency distribution. So hopefully um, you'll be here on the next video. I'll be presenting this in the following video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hope you would like and hit the subscribe button and um, um, see you in the next video. Okay. Thank you very much.